So today I want to talk about uh, skill um, in the hope that I can enlighten some of you about um, the importance of it, uh, why it's so important for your kids to focus primarily on skill um, other than, than, than other things. Um, and so basically um, there's a bit of a misconception out there in the, in the sense that people think that technique and skill is the same thing and, and in my opinion it isn't, I don't think it is and, and, and many professionals say the same thing. I think, you know, you can um, basically, let me just bring, bring this up so that I can recap for myself. So basically technique is the body's mechanical execution of ball manipulation. Um, aspects such as movement, balance, coordination, and so forth. So technique is more um, the, the function or the form of whatever it is that you're trying to do. So um, skill, on the other hand, is a little bit different because it has to do with the when and why. Um, so skill is basically the implementation of the technique. So when, you, when, you, you know, when you're out on the field and um, you're in a situation where you have to do something with the ball, there has to be context, and the context is what develops skill. Because without that context, um, there's no application. You know, the application in terms of technique is about repetition, and and it's about getting the form right, getting the the um, the technique right. You know, so you know which part of the foot to use, where to put your left foot, where to put your right foot. This is obviously something that coaches can provide feedback on for children and assistants with, so that they develop in the formative years. But skill itself is something that you do, um, in my opinion. Um, it's more about producing something that has context to it. And this is at least with football. Um, in football, I think skill has got to do with context. So there's got to be um, the environment present for you to be able to do something skillful in the first place. Um, so, so yeah, so these, these are the, the, the major differences between um, technique and skill. Um, and I think that when we talk about skill, um, especially in football, it really comes back to the 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 fact that um, when you're playing, skillful actions are generally um, undertaken via your subconscious rather than your conscious. So, um, generally speaking, for you to be really really skillful, you need to be able to look up. So you need to be able to see what's around you, and generally the best players can see things in advance. So they see things um, before they happen, and and there's a simple reason for that is just because they don't need to look at the ball as much. So if you don't need to look at the ball as much, because your your, your movements become subconscious movements, they become very much automated. Um, then you can free your eyes to 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 see a lot more. So. Um, I might try and paste some videos, uh, paste some videos on this on on this video just off the screen, so that you can maybe see some examples of what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, so so skill becomes more of a subconscious act, um, and one way to sort of explain it, um, and I guess maybe um, many of you can um, um, reflect on this in terms of the fact that when you're driving a car. Um, from A to B, and you're caught into a really in-depth conversation with someone. Generally, you'll, you'll you'll get to your destination, and and you'll think back, and you, and you won't even remember how you got there, and which, and you won't even remember the, the route in which you got there with. You know what I mean? So, um, so if that's the case, then who's doing the driving? Well, it's your subconscious. So you, you know, when you're driving, you're driving a car for a long time. Um, your subconscious generally takes over, so that your actions are are, are being done without much thought. Um, and football's the same. So when you're in a, a football environment and you've um, you know, you've worked on your technique for years and years and years, and you've um, incorporated that technical work with context in terms of your training environment, so that that context allows you to apply the technique in a game situation, then you start to develop more and more skill. And um, the more vision you have, the more the more you're able to to look up and see things. The um, the better a player you become, you see more. So you know one one of the things that sort of led led me to understand um, skill a little bit more happened about 13 years ago when I went to a conference uh, with a gentleman called um, Ain Jacquet, who was the coach of France in 1998 World Cup, 
um, when they want it. Um, and he did a seminar via Craig Foster organised it, um, and we went to University of New South Wales. He did a seminar for three days. He talked about the French football methodology and how they run all their programs and everything. It was riveting. It was a fantastic three days. Um, but halfway through it, there was a, a guy there who calls himself, I think he was a freestyle or something, and um, he he pulled a ball out of his car and he came into the courtyard while we were having a break and he started juggling the ball. And he was amazing. He just did things with the ball that I've never seen before. And I, for the first time in my life, I actually felt embarrassed that I didn't want to touch the ball. Um, that's how good this guy was. He was um, absolutely amazing, really amazing. He um, he was flicking it on his head and doing all these different tricks. And um, I just figured that he must have been a fantastic footballer as well because the skill level on him in terms of his freestyling was amazing. So it just so happened that on the last day they organised um, uh, a friendly a friendly match at the end of it. So it was. Great way to finish off the, the seminar. We all had a game, and I couldn't wait to see this guy play. And unfortunately, when, when we did play, um, he ended up being probably the worst football I've ever seen in my life. Couldn't pass the ball, couldn't travel the ball. Um, in the context of the game, he was really much out, officially out of order. Um, in, the, in, in the context of, of freestyling, he was, you know, unbelievable but in the context of football so and I, it was then that I realized there's a big difference between um, you know having the ability to manipulate the ball um, in an isolated fashion without any pressure um, and there's a big difference again with trying to do the same thing when someone's trying to get the ball off you and you've got to make a hundred different um, decisions and you've got to your brain and your eyes have to read all the data that's coming through, where the players are, where are your spaces, where you are on the field, all these different things. And those that kind of um, skill that you develop to be able to do that can only be um, taught in an environment that replicates the game. So this is why, um, for, for me, for children, it is really, really important that Kids do the repetitive stuff um, to improve on their technique, but ultimately it is the game itself um, that develops the decision-making processes, the, execu the execution, basically. Um, really, really important. So um, there has to be a, a balance. So you can't just focus on one thing. You have to focus on everything. Uh, many different elements in football. Um, I've spoken in the past about the cows, physiological, morphological, psychological, and so forth, um, and every one of those needs attention. But for the younger years, I think the most important is technique and skill. So those two things are really, really important, and those two things are developed for me in this country because we don't have um, the resources um, and the time um, to spend with the kids, I think it's really important that technique is something that needs to be done at home uh, via homework and it needs to be done in the right way. Um, the skill, on the other hand, I think is something that needs to be taught within the scope of a game. So in the past, we used to do that out on the street, uh, for hours and hours and hours playing with our friends unsupervised and we were building our skill out on the street. But in, this, in today's society, that doesn't happen anymore. Um, so it has to be it has to be done at training more often than not so you know my advice to coaches is to spend less time doing technical work and more time um, utilizing a game-based platform in order to develop the skill of your players when if your kids are going to be practicing at home it's not sufficient enough for them to just kick a ball against the wall i think what needs to happen i mean if the, the more they do it um the better they're going to get so if they're just out there for an hour or two every day and they're just kicking the ball against the wall doing different things trying to juggle off the ball juggling with the ball and so forth they are going to improve but they're only going to improve so much so it's like the whole concept of driving the car if um if you if you only need to get to from a to b um once you get pretty good at getting a to b you just plateau and it's the same with football development in terms of your technical training so if you want your kids to become 
um, race car drivers in terms of football, um, you need to change the way they do that isolated training. So um, there has to be a margin of error or for error um, so that every time the pass against the wall is done or the kick against the wall is done, um, there has to be a target. And so if you actually put a target in there, the brain works differently. And they've also got to try to, to do things um, relatively quickly. So at speed, it's, it's much harder to do things where you have a small target and trying to do it at speed than it is to hit a massive wall that just can go anywhere, but you know it doesn't really um, allow the brain to focus on the... Um, the mistakes that you're making because in, in most cases when you don't have those targets you don't even realize you're making mistakes so um, in order to to improve you need to have a margin of error so you need to have a, something marked out on the wall you can put different numbers on there and they can aim for those numbers um, or targets some kind of target anyway and try to do you know make 10 in a row and try and do it really quickly where they hit the target 10 times in a row so it's important because if you do that, the, the rate in which they're going to improve is going to be much, much quicker as well. Um, so yeah, so some, a little bit of info there. Hopefully that um, uh, serves a, a bit of a purpose for both for parents and for coaches. Um, uh, please subscribe. Um, I welcome your feedback and your comments. If um, um, you, anything you'd like to add or something you'd like me to talk about in terms of football, uh please write in or, or leave a comment and um i'll get back to you as, as soon as i can cheers